weather's so much changing and so are so many other things. If your eyes can't adjust to change, are you burning your retinas? In the school right behind me where I once attended a class with a teacher who was wildly attractive. Uh, she was blonde hair, blue eyes. Her blue eyes, when you sat in the front row, you could gaze at them as she would stand in front of a projector. Now this projector, if you don't know, is a source of light that has a beam. And so her standing in front of this beam only it accelerated the blueness of her iris, which made it sparkle like a diamond in a display case. And so with that in hand, uh, to understand how much eyes are like a box, and so much so that boxes have powers. And a power on a box, you could say is like a breaker. But now we're getting into a bit nitpicky of the aesthetics. You're saying, you can't talk about electricity as an aesthetic. Contrary-wise, I've heard of a guy... See, this is where... My eyes are not adjusted, so I'm trying to squint to level off the amount of projection of light beam blasting in them. So just think of my hot teacher and her was standing in front of the... I think she saw that I was staring at her, and so she knew that, of course, she was older. She must know these things. When you get older, you just know these things. If you've got light eyes and you're standing in front of a beam projecting in them, whether it be a sun or a, a projector, it's going to fill an effect like a diamond case. But back to me uh, being hodgepodge about the word aesthetic when you're addressing hardcore material goods. See, I think of a hardcore material good as, uh, well, stuff, if the power goes down, you'll be up Shit's Creek. So a septic tank, uh, a power grid, to name a few. And so what I'm inferencing is there was a really smart guy and he was explaining how much the um, power lines is just as though a chain running through them, a chain being looked at as a electromagnetic wave. It has a trough, it has a trove, it has a crest. And ongoing and ongoing just like a chain so to picture that you wouldn't be hard pressed to think that this chain is no different than a fluid dynamic of a pipe system and there are so many pipe fitters so much of them would agree what's the best piping and with the electricians they could tell you well what antenna would be good Combining the two together, I think, are uncanny relations. There's no reason. Then the judicial system. And that's where this is going in gratification for things that are not conspiratorial. They would subside to, well, let's see what the judge has to say. And these judges, I'm not going to speak bad on them, but believe me, you, they're not in favor of justice. No, not every one of them. And so in speaking in layman's terms, if I will, there is a, um, there's a thing I've got to pass. Hold on to some dead air for a second. Um, what was I trying to pass? What was I trying to pass? And so, um, hold on one second for trying to pass. The, um, not the Writers Guild, the painters uh, on street corners, they get a pass. Um, what the hell was I trying to? Oh, yeah, things that are clickbaity. And so this is with utilities, and this is the biggest emphasis on, uh, you know, there's raw materials. 
that emphasis is. Notice with a lot of smart machines, they're really clicky and they have these loud beeps. Uh, this is for instant gratification, for making you feel like everything is being handled. Because, wow, look at this contraption. The same is the same in, quite literally, uh, the judicial system where, wow, the judge ruled on the outcome. That means that it's official. So the embodiment of the judicial system is the literal representation of this quick, um, clicky, smart tech stuff. And I noticed that it's prone to clickbait. So this instant gratification from these things is synthetic. I want to address something that would probably get me sued by a major company for stating the obvious. And this is what they don't want you to do in court. Because if you can show something that's tested, that you have proof in a court of law, the jury will be impressed if they're allowed to be there, if you're allowed to show your evidence. No, my friends, it is not a lighter, which we'll get a close up later, but in checking for perforations on a cup. This is when it's chopped up minus like a fine grain. So if you take like a cheese grater and you would saw it across the brim of a plastic cup, there'd be a whole bunch of perforations. And so that's, there's two, there's two parts here. Let's dig in the heels just a little bit and pump the brakes at the same time. If you've got a forefront and a backdrop, that can look like it's all on one piece of paper. But if you have two pieces of paper and you draw on one and then you draw something on the second piece of paper, you hold that up to a light and with depth perception, you can tell that they're not on the same piece of paper. Pretty complex, huh? But let's use that illustration to depict this pictorial. So there's, um, as I was mentioning before, perforations on the rim. And it's hard to see, and that's actually a good thing because the lid is actually bending over them. So when the water gets tilted, it doesn't pick up the excess particles of plastic because it's being guarded by this uh, lip of the cap. But the uh, second place you need to check is the mouthpiece. And this, of course, has fewer perforations, though some. But um, the moment you take off the lid and then uh, drink the water, you're going to be exposing the backdrop to the forefront. And now this quick picture of... There was these baby jo <clears throat> jokes when I was growing up, and they are like, Mama had a baby and her head popped off, and then they would pick up a daisy and flip the top off, and uh, this would be ostensibly the baby losing its head. Um, these aren't accepted anymore, and it's funny because the replacement of this have been uh, birth control pills. On an emphasis diagonals, uh, this is where, with your body or on a physical object, the range of motion, you can think in your head, I'm going diagonal, and then move in that, especially if it's in a circuit. And when I say a circuit, I mean it's a thing that is repetitive around Robin, a thing that you would do over and over and over. And so there's a giant emphasis on that, especially when you're grabbing onto stuff and moving it. There's a thing with, with whatever you touch, uh, it is an extension of yourself, for lack of better terms. No, but really, uh, in picturing in your mind and moving that thing, or just your body, in a diagonal, it speaks numbers. The same can be said with the material in sewing. If you uh, aim your needle diagonally and uh, you sew it through the fabric onto another one, that string it's going to be cemented in a diagonal fashion. And this is so spectacular is because the wave function, it collapses. 
uh, diagonal wise. And of course, with what a wave is, it's energy. And so the particle for energy is a photon. Photons can only travel straight, horizontal or parallel. And so in putting two and two together, you almost want to be moving diagonal to get the upper hand when putting two and two together. It's not just the sun why I have problems. Uh, in any main street, it channels wind. And so when you're combining wind and bright lights, it's a twofer. So anything that's bad in doubling down with anything that's good Let's try and put two and two together. These good things come in threes. Is to know if you're swimming with a wild animal. No one wants to do that. But that is to say, you don't want to be swimming in a herd of wild animals. Of course not. <laughs>